Amen. Bless you all. So now you were warned. <clears throat> if you could see the, see the back of this, I'm glad you can't. I've got so many books and papers here. You'll be shocked. Hallelujah. I'm so thrilled to be here with you. I really am. On the 22nd day of April 2004, and I'm so happy. Papa Jim and Sister Gwen are here. Just so glad to have you with us. Amen. I just want to honor mom and dad of this ministry. And, and Stacy, all the way from Canada, thank you again. And Richard Hurd, we love you. We just love you. Thank you so much for that wonderful word. Wasn't that awesome last night? And everybody else, just give yourself a hug because you're just too many. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Um, I've got so much to get through that I'm going to need help. Okay, so. Kuriya sandoro shondoro bashantare ya sandoro shotara pray. Kiriya sandoro shondoro bashantara basandara bashana. Put your hands towards me and say, Lord bless Natasha. Amen. Amen. I receive that. Can we go to Zechariah 1 and verse 1? Thank you, Jesus. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. The word Zechariah means the Lord remembers. The son of Berechiah, Berechiah means the Lord blesses. The son of Ido means the son of the Satan. The prophet saying, I'm going to suggest to you that the Lord is remembering his promises of blessing. The Lord Zakaz, his promises of blessing, Baruch, and at the set time, the Moed, we will prophesy and move out of the place that we've been in up to now. That the Bible says, in verse 2, the Lord has been very angry with your fathers, the last generation before us. We're going to move out of that place. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will. It's a definite. I will do what? Return to you, says the Lord of hosts. This is not... Jehovah Jireh speaking particularly, this is who? The Lord of the armies of angelic legions marching. The Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth. He is marching. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear, nor heed me, says the Lord. Amen. Hello. We are not going to be like that. We can hear. Amen. Lord, anoint our ears to hear. We want to hear you clearly. And what we heard for this convention was, the set time to favor Zion has come. And Sean actually went over some of my territory yesterday, and it was really good because I don't have to do all of that. And he was talking to you about set time, appointed time, being from the Greek is a kairos moment. Kairos is a window that when it opens, it is only open for a season. You've heard open heaven here. You've heard you to say get under it when it opens because it's not going to be there all the time. These things are dispensational. They open and they close. If you're not there, you're not there. You're not going to be beamed up. Last night was beaming up time. Amen. If you didn't get in it, you didn't get in it. But we believe it's still here in this conference. Amen. Kairos time in the, in the Greek, guess what it is in the Hebrew? In the Hebrew, it is spelt, would you believe, E-T-H. 
ETH, the window opens for a season. And it is the feminine word or noun for time. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. So there's a female time window opening. So why is it not a male time window? Hello? Is God a sexist? Has he got a problem? No. It's female because something's going to be brought forth. When you get into this window, something is going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you got a clean womb today? Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. There's so much angelic activity in Zechariah 1. In verse 8, Zechariah is saying, uh, He sees by night, and behold, a man rides on a, white, a red horse and stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. And he says, My Lord, what are these? What is going on? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. You see that toing and froing if you read the book of Job, where certain ones come and present themselves in the court of heaven. So this is a reporting army. There's intelligence going up between heaven and earth. And so they answered, Where, where's the question? There's no question. So they answered, the angel of the Lord, who stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro throughout the earth, and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. So there's a question, what's going on on the earth? Give us a report here in heaven. We want angelic intelligence. And the angelic intelligence is coming to the captain. And his name is Jesus. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on, Zion, on, on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah against which you were angry these 70 years? Years. So there's this conference now happening with the throne of heaven. And the question is, how long is the situation going to stay the way it's been? Because you've been angry. See, God is saying, I'm coming back. But you see, the state has been up to the last 70 years. I've been angry. But if you will return to me, I will return to you. And the Lord answered the angel who talked to me. So here we come, all the way down to Zechariah, from the throne room, through the intercessor Jesus, all the way to Zechariah. And the Lord answered, and the angel talked to me with good and comforting words. And the angel who spoke with me said to me, proclaim saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal, I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease, for I was a little angry, but they helped, but with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. You know, I preached this quite a while last year about the angel measuring, measuring nations and measuring cities. And I thought I was getting away from it. But you know what? The context of Psalm 102 verse 13, the set time to favor Zion has come because the 70 years are over is the context. So I had to come back here. Again proclaim, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city shall again spread out through prosperity, and the Lord will again comfort Zion, and I will again choose Jerusalem. 
Now, do you remember, Sean was explaining to us about comforting. Remember? He was saying having mercy, comforting. Um, Bishop Richard Hurd touched on it. There's a whole issue that God is going to comfort because he, the greater one, the superior one, is going to bend down to the weak one, the inferior one, and he's going to do something incredible. He says, I will choose and I will comfort. This uh, Zechariah uh, 2 and 1, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man. It's not a man-man. This is an angel man. A man with a measuring line in his hand. You know, God's into measurement. God's into rank. He's into protocol. The Greek word for measure is metron. And you have to understand your sphere of influence to understand where you can operate Amen? What does Act 17 say? That God has actually set nations, tribes, and tongues in their boundaries or their measurements. Amen? Uh, the Apostle Paul says that I speak to you within the sphere of influence given to me, within the measure given to me. I am not overstepping the lines here. God is not into you playing with boundary lines on any level. Seriously. Doesn't like it. Don't move it. Don't have unjust scales and weights, but don't move the ancient boundary lines because he set them already before the foundation of the earth. Amen. So he has a measuring line in his hand. So he has that Christ. So I said, where are you going? Saying to the angel. And he answers. He said to me, to measure Jerusalem. For what? Look at for what? To see what is its width and what is its length? Who's measuring? The angel. Where do you think the statistics are going to land up when he has finished measuring Jerusalem? They're going up to heaven because God has various accounting departments and administrative departments in heaven where they are into the statistics of our boundaries. They're into the statistics of what is going on in our region, in our territory, and what we are doing with the anointing, the destiny, and the calling that God has already measured to you. And so, you know, the receiver of revenue in heaven sends out measuring angels. Angels who weigh in scales. Angels who measure and write down the records in books. Hallelujah. If you go and just look up measures and scales, you'll be amazed how many scriptures you'll find. To measure Jerusalem, to see what it is width and what is its length. So have we come to the breadth and the length and the width of the perfect man? What is the stature right now in Jerusalem? What is the stature right now in this conference? What can the angels bring today? Because the measure has gone to heaven. DHL is not fast enough. XPS can't do it. The U.S. Postal Service with all its promises won't do this for you. So angels are moving in and out of this conference, and they are busy measuring and weighing. And I am praying that we will not find too light and lacking in the scale, so that when the windows open, praise God, we have the capacity to receive what is coming down. And, and there was the angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet with him. Here we go. He has all this angelic activity. They're passing each other, and he's watching all of this. Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. 
For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. God says, I am coming as my own boundary line. I am coming, you see. When this measurement is over, I am going to establish my own boundaries, but they will be in walls of fire. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. In verse 7, it says, Up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of, of Babylon. This is the end of your 70 years, you know. Verse 8, For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Praise you, Jesus. And you know, for, for many of you, you know exactly what that means. The apple of his eye is what? It's the, the what? It's the pupil. Okay? So if you mess with God, you're putting your finger, where? In his eye. What's that about? It says this. In the Song of Solomon 8 and 10. I am a wall, and my breast like towers, and then I became in his eyes as one who found peace, shalom, favor, mercy, compassion. I became in his eyes the width and the breadth and the length that he was dreaming about before the foundation of the earth. See, God measures with his eye. If you look at somebody and you look in their eyes, what do you see? Look at somebody that's close to you. Look in their eyes and tell me, what do you see? When you look at someone close enough, you will see in the pupil, what? Yourself. Your own reflection. The reason you don't know your destiny, your purpose, you don't know that your measure is because you've not looked in his eyes close enough. You haven't seen the pupil. So you haven't seen the part that is reflecting you back. You're too far away from him. So have a look in his eyes so that you can see what the angels are measuring in this hour. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Measurement is about rank, territory, mandate, and authority. Weight is about glory, suffering, and intercession. Thank you, Lord. We are being measured. How much glory do you have capacity for? Amen. How much? can you carry for your nation? How much can you carry for your city? How much? Praise you, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done and thy kingdom come. God is expecting us to pray his will on earth. Hello? This earth, this earth, yeah, I will on earth as it is in heaven, in the blueprint, architectural design, and measurement that is in his eye. So I'm not in agreement with anything else. I want what I look like in his eyes. I want this convention to look like he sees it in his eyes. So don't mess with it. Don't put your finger in there. Just say, yes, Lord. If you can't see it, you're too far away. Okay? It's time to get closer. But you've got to come through the fire. Thy will be done means, let it be formed, come to pass, 
and be created from nothing. Because maybe his will right now is not here, formed and fashioned on earth, but you are praying, our Father, are pulling down what needs to be pulled down from heaven to earth. Edward de Bono, who's a management guru, said the following. He said, if you will not design your own future, somebody else certainly will and has. Do you know that there's blueprint plans in hell for your life? Some of you feel like you've gone through hell. Well, you have. Because you haven't looked in his eyes to see what, what is the comparison here. Time to do it. We are here because it's the set time. And I've got, to, I've got a lot of stuff to get through. And if Tudor was allowed to fry your brain yesterday, <clears throat> you don't mind if we follow suit here. Okay, how are you doing everybody? Are you okay? All right. So we've been to God's administration department. You're being measured and weighed. In Malachi 3.16, there's a book of remembrance being written before the Lord in His presence. Daniel verse 7, 9 and 10 speaks of the ancient of days seated with books, plural, open before Him while the court is seated. Psalm 139 verse 16 said, My body is written in your book, including all the days of my life before I was born. The Jews believe, and I have it here, and I've done it in a few places. The Jews believe that before you are even conceived in your mother's womb, you come under the shepherd's rod or the rod of the shepherd, and your whole life is commissioned by him. And he prophesies a decree about all your life and it is written before him, and then you are put in your mother's womb. And so the Jews believe that when they come to the feast of Rosh Hashanah, and they repent before Yom Kippur, that which they're not looking like, that they should be looking like, that was under the shepherd's rod, can adjust. Because they really do believe that when God sits with the books that are opened on Rosh Hashanah, He decides who will live and who will die that year. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a very frightening concept, isn't it? We've been saved and we'll just continue to be saved. It really doesn't matter what we do. Really? Really? The books are opened every year, and God says, oh, you had this prophecy, you went to this conference, you received that anointing, so-and-so laid hands on you then, you promised to do this then, you, you were tithing here now, you're not now, you gave an offering, you promised, you didn't do, it's in his auditing department. The angels are measuring your attitude, your behavior, intercessor, pastor, Fivefold ministry. Serious. We have an idea there must be a library of information in heaven about the affairs of men. And we must conclude that God is interested in these records or files. The question for you today is, what is written in the book for your life? And have you read it? And have you measured in his eyes what is written there? And what is written in the records for my church and my city and my country? God is not interested in you doing whatever you felt like doing when you woke up in the morning and sucked your thumb and said, well, you know, I have an idea. Because he's already written it down. If somebody prophesies over your life, they better be reading out of the book that is already written. Are you hearing me? Because if they're not reading out of the book that's already written... It's not God. And the problem is you're just asking about you. Now there's angels going to and fro that have books that they want you to read. But you're going, no, no, I just want a prophecy for me. 
Bless me, bless me. And now we've got this library of books. And Bolivia is there, and Guatemala is there, and Saudi Arabia is there, and Congo is there, and I don't know who else is there. And the angel wants to bring the book before you and read to you your, the chapter where you're in it. For that nation, tribe, and tongue, but you're not interested. Bless me, Lord, I want to be more blessed. One car will go too far, but three will be better. Hello? Are you hearing me? And when the books are opened in heaven, and the Congo says, hold them responsible because this village didn't hear, and this one was appointed to come, and you were not there because you didn't read your book. There's a place, intercessor, that you are responsible because you say, I can hear God and I can see and I can understand. Well, good. Then you're responsible. And you will answer. God will measure kingdoms and the people who rules them. Daniel 5 and verse 25. Meeny, meeny, tickle. Bufasen. God has numbered your kingdom. That's an accounting book. God has weighed you in the scales. That's the scales or a weight book. And your kingdom has been divided and given a book of judgment over that kingdom. Three books. How are we doing? If men are weighed and measured, cities are and nations are. How is your nation weighing in the scales of heaven today? Yesterday we took an offering. It was very interesting when Bishop Hood was ministering last night. We took an offering to raise the t statistics in certain countries that came forward, and we sowed into those statistics because God will weigh us. Do you know, I know when I get to heaven, that the book of South Africa is going to be opened. Do you call yourself an intercessor for South Africa? Can I see your hand, please? Intercessors for South Africa? Hello, wave at me. Now, don't get all excited and shy. We're all going to be there together. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you feeling scared now? Me too. Good. We'll hold hands. Zimbabwe. The book of Zimbabwe. Zambia. Book for Zambia. Mauritius. Swaziland. Uganda. Hallelujah. And you know, because I'm standing and talking to you, I'm in that book too. Teachers are going to be judged twice more. Praise you, Jesus. Can the weight of God's presence and glory on your life, your church, your ministry, tip the scales? Are you heavy enough in the glory of God to tip the scales of judgment for your city? For your nation. Father, we're just asking you today, help us. We need help. I need help. I know I need help. A lot of help. Thank you, Lord. As far as this scripture is concerned behind me, I just had great fun with it. Psalm 102 and we've been there yesterday with Sean. And we were there with Tudor Bismarck. And if you look at this Psalm 102, it's called the prayer of the afflicted when he's overwhelmed and pours out his complaint before the Lord. In fact, his bones are clinging. It sounds like he's been fasting, this person. He's like a sparrow alone on the, on the, roof, on the housetop. Verse 8, his enemies are reproaching him all the time. He's weeping. Okay. And it's saying, after all of that description, verse 13, you will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. And so the nations shall fear the name of the Lord and the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord shall build up Zion, and he shall appear 
in his glory. Here he is, after 70 years, he will do it. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise their prayer. Are you destitute? Are you desperate enough? How desperate are we really? This will be written for the generation to come that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. The Lord viewed the earth to hear. What's he listening for? The groaning of the prisoner and to release those appointed to death to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. We are gathered together to serve the Lord. Verse 